uh, this is I think you know what's going to happen next um, if you can see this you're placing that in historical I context I understand that please don't say that again we don't have time for it you've made that point five times already I don't okay. know what you have time oh my for God, let me for explain the, for the love myself. of God let me finish a sentence man I don't, maybe you're not used to women talking. I don't know, but I'd like to finish a sentence, sir. Anyway, so. Uh, no, you're so, misleading them. So when, when, I mean, after that interview, uh, uh, what do you feel when you go home? Uh, what do you feel like? Do you just feel like that was some more, you know, uh, silly Western supremacy? Or, is, or what, what, take me through that. Like, what's, what's your feelings after the interview when you go home and you process what just happened? You know, honestly speaking, of course, he was totally disrespectful of me, disrespectful of Palestinian women, especially disrespectful of my wife. And I'll tell you why. And uh, she was reflecting an Orientalist, white supremacist view of Arabs, Palestinians, maybe Muslims. And uh, it was racist, pure racist. That's how I felt. And arrogant. And a bit hysterical. I mean, uh, I could feel he was hysterical, actually. And uh, as you noticed, I remained calm because I understood her strategy. I think her strategy was to provoke me. And you could understand why she was reacting in this manner if you look at the whole interview. Because the first five minutes, we had a very strong interaction in which I managed to bring in the Palestinian view. I think... I, I, I felt that her newsroom people were probably, or she had that in her mind. Now they will blame me for allowing him to, to, to say all these things. And so I, I think she was feeling very angry because she couldn't control the interview. Uh, okay. But her behavior was totally unacceptable and unjustified. Uh, I, I, as I said before, I, I think she also showed that she was absolutely arrogant and unprepared because had she done a little bit of research, she would have discovered two things. First of all, that I am one of the most prominent leaders struggling for women's rights and for absolute unconditional women's rights to be achieved. And uh, I am I am actually, I have a, a long life of participating in in helping women organization and uh, in empowering women in everything I did, whether in political life or medical work or anything else. But the second point, my wife is the one of the most known women, uh, uh, one of the most known women struggling for women's rights. And she is a well-known researcher. She's the most published researcher in Palestine. Uh, she is highly respected as a professor, as a teacher, and also as an advocate of women's and Palestinian rights. And she even got uh, two honorary PhD degrees from two of the most famous British universities, King's College and London School of Economics. So how could I be a person who doesn't listen to women? You know, it's it was so stupid of her and so ignorant at the same time. And so, uh, but I didn't think it was a big deal, you know. Uh, I didn't think it was a big deal. And yeah. then suddenly, 48 hours later, this went viral. And to my knowledge, there were like 1,800,000 complaints about this interview. Uh, worldwide, from Mexico to Canada to Russia to all European countries. And... Uh, but I think that what happened helped us, didn't? Uh, but it helped show the Western media bias against Palestinians. You, you mentioned you managed to keep your cool. There's a there's a there's an example of you not not keeping your cool. If you if you can indulge me, I just want to again get your <laughs> get your reaction to. Uh, it's it's more Douglas Murray, I think, who really upset yes, you. Yes, yeah? exactly. You shut up. You are not the one who is uh, asking me the questions. You're not the anchor. So shut up, please, and let me answer. I am saying what you we'll are what trying you want, to do sir? here is to mislead the discussion. Ask I am the main discussion here is okay. So so I mean I think you know what happens there. There's a there's a there's a long dis exchange where you and Douglas Murray are speaking over each other and and you tell him to shut up a few times. Um, have you told someone to shut up because before an interview? He was interrupting me. 
You know, I, 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 we can, we can see that. But is that the first time you've told someone to shut up while being on TV? That no. you can. They remember? <laughs> it happened. It happened also with, with the anchors of Arab TV stations when they try to not allow me to speak. Um, well, shut up is not like uh, a very serious violation. You know? No, no, no. It's, it's. I mean, it's, it's, it's not. I, it's I not, mean, in another not... occasion, not, not, not. In, 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 a, in a similar time with a, an, an anchor from uh, Al Arabiya TV, which is uh, an Arabic TV station, the anchor was repeating things that were not correct and also interrupting me. So I told him, please be silent so that I can answer him. What's your, what's your, I mean, one of the other things we've seen because of the media uh, and their reaction to this is and, and who they're platforming is we've seen we've seen some a very strange and, and almost gobsmackingly uh, very racist extremely racist uh, views um i mean the and, and supremacies and and camouflage supremacies and sometimes very overt supremacies uh, what's your response and take to that i mean do, do you i mean you mentioned it earlier that uh, when, when thinking about the us and the international um, the western governments especially there their lack of of being really forceful in speaking out against what's happening, but again, has this surprised you and and, and shocked you in any way? What shocked me was what I told you first. That uh, what shocked me that uh, all these people who are talking about human rights and international law allow now the death of international law and sending one message to the world that we are ruled now. If we look at what's happening in Gaza and West Bank. We are not ruled by international law, but by the law of jungle. And this is dangerous strategically because it sends the message all over the world that you can do whatever you want if you have the power. And there, there will be consequences to that. But if you speak about whether I am surprised from Western media bias, no, I'm not. I wasn't. Because I, I had had this experience for so many years before. I think there has been, I mean, just from my own my own surprise, perhaps, is that often when it comes to the, the Palestinian-Israeli issue uh, and the U.S. and the U.K. in particular, um, a lot of credit is given to APEC um, and the fact that they, uh, they're lobbying strongly. And so a lot of politicians or lobby groups or interest groups are beholden to the Israeli narrative. But now it just seems like there's, uh, 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 alongside all of that, there's just been this ugly, racist intentions that's just been sort of bubbling under um, and almost seem to be un unleashed um, because it seems like like the the type of arguments that are being put forth and not they're not always by by people connected to interest groups they people often they are but often it's just it's just random people on twitter or, or speakers um, who've really latched on to uh, to some sort of, of of i mean what's your response to that what's your response to to this dormant racism and why do you think that even after many years of education around racism, I mean, in from 2016 to 2020, we saw the U.S. was full of riots and 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 and, and protests against racism, and the world has become a lot more woke in the last 15 years about all all kinds of human rights, um, not just basic human dignity. Uh, what's your response to that, and how do you think we got there? Well, uh, there are many many issues here. First of all. Uh, part of the journalists in this world are biased to the Israeli point of view or are afraid of listening to the Palestinian point of view because they are subjected to what I call intellectual terror. One example, one, it's, it's almost close to McCarthyism, new McCarthyism. Uh, for, take, for example, the fact that they forced the dean of Harvard University and Pennsylvania University and MIT University to, to resign just because students were allowed to express their views, you know. It wasn't like these guys did anything or expressed a particular view. It's because they allowed freedom of expression in their campuses. So there is an act of intellectual terror that Israeli lobby is using. And it is McCarthyism to that reached the level in Germany of, uh, of uh, arresting people who were just showing the Palestinian flag. Although, Germany claims to be supportive of two-state solution, you know. But then the other thing you mentioned is this explosion of racism, of white supremacy racism. 
That is related to two factors, in my opinion. The first factor is that Netanyahu intentionally tried to mobilize every negative group in this world against Palestinians, including white supremacy, racism, fascism. Uh, uh, all, I mean, look, he's, he's, he's building alliances with the most extreme, uh, vicious, right-wing people. And he noticed that there is a shift in the world to the right wing, I mean, to the to the extremism. And he's using that. And he did it in the United States first by shifting the main alliance between Israel and uh, American parties from Democrats to Republicans and to neocons in particular. But in addition to that, there was suddenly the Palestinian issue and what happened in Gaza suddenly brought to the surface something that was deep there. And that is these feelings of white supremacist uh, discrimination and the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the anti-refugees uh, feelings. And uh, all of that suddenly came to the surface. Why? Why is that? Not only because Israel was promoting that, uh, and not only because Netanyahu lobbied these forces to be mobilized, but also, I think, because deep down, many of these people felt insulted, many of these right-wing extremists felt insulted that somehow these Palestinians, these Arabs, these Muslims, these locals, us, regardless of the fact that we have many Christians among Palestinians, they look at us in this way, and how could they be so able to organize and use science and be capable of confronting the mighty Israeli power, which is our being, you know? I, I think that that is probably one of the explanations why you saw this terrible racism, 